You know when you get that feeling that somebody's looking at you and you like look around, you're not really sure, you know, but you can feel somebody is just kind of like looking at you? Okay, I have been wanting to declutter my closet for a little while. Now, since I've become more conscious about having less clutter and less stuff in my home, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, over the last few years, I've really just been on this journey of learning to live with less. I'm certainly not a minimalist by any means, but just to have less stuff. I have gotten a lot better about having a more minimal closet. Um, actually, when we moved into the house that we live in right now, I cut my wardrobe essentially like in half. And that was a moment when I really realized that I didn't need nearly as many clothes as as I had had because I cut my closet in half and I still had like plenty of stuff to wear. But I feel like my uh, wardrobe needs a good little uh, purge. I feel like laundry is kind of catching up with me. It's catching up on me. It's building up on me. I do one load of laundry for myself a week and anytime I feel like I need to do more than that, it is a sign to me that that it's time to like look at my wardrobe. And I've been doing a bunch of research around like minimal closets and I really wanna continue to focus on just having a more minimal and sustainable closet. I just think, like I said, it's easier to maintain, it's easier to get dressed, and overall it's just a big time and money saver. But it's hard, like purging clothes is one thing, but then keeping your closet minimal is another thing because you know, you go shopping, you end up bringing an extra piece in and then you want something that's trendy. And so it's easy for your closet to sort of like get a little overloaded again. I did a bunch of research and I think that I found a pretty good, just like general method and I have some really good tips and tricks to share with you guys to creating a more minimal closet. So let's go ahead and dive into this. All right, the first thing that you need to do that I think is probably the step that most people skip when it comes to purging our closet. When most of us want to purge our closet, the first thing we go is we go to our closet, we take everything out. But I think before you even need to do that, one of the most important things you should do is create a game plan. So to start, I looked at a bunch of different minimal closet checklists, capsule wardrobe guides, and so many things I read really seem to stick to this like number of 30. I don't know where it came from. It was like 30 piece wardrobe, but it was like this number 30 kept coming up over and over again. So as I was sort of researching that and thinking about this like 30 number, I realized I really do need to allow myself multiple wardrobes. Like I'm not somebody who can live with one single wardrobe. One, because of being a mom, you have a wardrobe for when you're just a mom, like I am right now. I have a one-year-old, I have a three-year-old. You have a wardrobe for pregnancy and postpartum if you're still in that season of life. But on top of that, I'm also someone who lives um, in a place where the winters can be below zero and the summers can go as high as like 100 degrees. So it seems really silly that I would have one wardrobe for both of those two different seasons, if you will. So I started by thinking about the, the wardrobes I need for my season of life right now, which is I need my warm weather wardrobe and my cold weather wardrobe. And I started breaking down the pieces that I need that would live in both of these categories, the things that are just warm weather and the things that are just cold weather, with the goal of having about 30 pieces in both of those two wardrobes um, to kind of get to that like goal number of 30. And so I sort of had created this like general game plan and the sort of goal of what I wanted to hit. And then this allows me to go into my clothing purging with like a lot more of a plan, but I also feel like it's like a little bit of motivation. So you'll see as I get to the point of purging, which you know we're getting to in the next step, um, I can really sort of look at this number in this frame of reference and it can help me really weed out some pieces that maybe I don't need. So step number two, it is time to purge. So I pulled out essentially every single piece of clothing that I could find besides the small load of laundry that I currently had down in the washing machine. We just got back from vacation. So I had some stuff in the washing machine. Um, and I thought that it would actually be really, really interesting to count how many pieces of clothing I had, seeing as everything I was reading was like going for this 30 piece goal. So I went ahead and I counted everything and I was 
completely floored that I landed at exactly the number 100. I thought that was really cool that I had exactly 100 pieces of clothing, but I actually don't have 100 pieces of clothing. I had some more because I was wearing clothes and I had some clothes down in the laundry. So once I added everything up, this was actually the total number of clothing pieces that I had. Okay, so the next thing I did was take all of my clothes and I tried to just basically kind of organize them out into the categories that I had created in my game plan. So, you know, we have casual dresses and dressy dresses. We have jeans, jean shorts. We have t-shirts, tank tops, sweaters, sweatshirts. I kind of just got everything all scheduled out, scheduled out, all um, organized out. And then it was time to essentially go through category by category and decide what was worth keeping and what it was time to toss. Okay, let's do sweaters. I had given myself five sweaters. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I feel like I can cut this down. I feel like I could probably cut it down even to three or four. So right off the bat, I have two brown sweaters. I probably don't need two. I like this one a thousand times more. So that one's gonna go. That was easy. Next we have two colorful sweaters. These are very different. This is like a green chunky sweater. This is a pink turtleneck. The pink turtleneck I'm gonna keep. I loved the pink color on me. Now obviously when you're trying to have a more minimal wardrobe, um, you know, a really easy thing to think about is like Pairing back how many colors you have. You want to think about colors that go with lots of different things. That's why neutrals are great because you can use them a ton. So having whites and blacks and khakis and grays are always great. But I don't think it means you can't have any colors. I think you just got to think about the couple of colors that look really good on you and then sort of picking those ones that will then match lots of, lots of other stuff. So I know that this color pink looks great on me. I can wear it with jeans, I can wear it with black, I can wear it with white, I can wear it with gray, so it's still a really great choice even though it's a bright bold color. I can still totally have this in my wardrobe and it works. Okay, last but not least is this sweater. My husband bought this for me two Christmases ago because it looks like none other than Olive. It's all of on a sweater. So it's a super sentimental piece, but to be honest, I didn't wear it a ton this winter and I'm not even sure why, because it's actually super comfortable. It fits really great. So I'm not really sure, but I have parred my sweaters back to only two sweaters. So I feel like it's worth it. I can allow myself to keep it one more time. It still fits into my game plan. And if by next winter it never really comes out again, then I'll know that it's time to go. Okay, so one of the things that I'm doing as I go through all of these clothes is um, actively taking out anything that like was specifically bought for pregnancy or postpartum life. Um, sometimes a lot of postpartum things can like continue on for a long time, but anything that like was really sp like I have a nursing nightgown. I don't, I don't need this anymore for everyday life. I have a couple maternity dresses that just ended up in there. You know, I have a handful of leggings that I kind of bought specifically for like postpartum life, but I don't necessarily need them for like everyday life now. And what I'm going to be doing is just creating like a little separate wardrobe. It's going to go in its own like vacuum seal bag of pregnancy and postpartum stuff. You know, just at a place now where my second baby is over a year old, I'm not pregnant or like immediately postpartum or nursing anymore. So a lot of these clothes don't really make sense to have in my everyday wardrobe. So I'm just going to weed them out and essentially create them into their own little wardrobe that will go into a vacuum seal bag and I will store in the basement. I'm not donating this stuff just yet because, you know, we don't exactly know if we're done having children. There may be a, a third child at some point. This is not a confession. I'm not currently pregnant. Please don't be like lurking my Instagram looking for baby bumps because if we do have a third child, there are no plans for a third child currently in this year of 2022. Um, my best friend is getting married at the end of the year and I very much hope to have a glass of champagne at that wedding. Okay, we're moving on to button ups and blouses and actually I did a huge purge of these last year so I only have two items. I told you guys like I've been trying to have more minimal, minimal wardrobe. It's something that I've been working on and I'd like to say that it's probably not something you're just gonna be able to do overnight. Even if you do a big purge like I'm doing right now and you get your closet down to like 40 pieces or whatever, eventually new things seep in. So I think in order to have minimal closet, it's not like you just decide today you're having minimal closet and then you just have it forever. All right guys, here is a small problem. <laughs> sweatshirts. I don't need this many sweatshirts. I know I don't. Let's see what I had written down. I thought that I should only need three sweatshirts. What was yesterday Callie thinking? Doesn't seem like enough. Anytime you can categorize helps, like that's why I broke everything down into sweatshirts and sweaters, but then if you can categorize even more, so like I have my sweatshirts, I'm gonna say like, okay, my sports sweatshirts. And out of actually just looking at them now that I pulled them out, out of just looking at these, I know right away, 
this is the last one that I ever grabbed for, so I'm gonna let it go. The next is this yellow one. I bought this for pregnancy and then I used it for postpartum because I had the slits. So I'm going to keep it, but it is going to go into the postpartum wardrobe. I don't need it in my everyday wardrobe anymore. So I got my sweatshirts down to five. I feel like that's pretty dang good. Moving right along to the one other category that I know I have the most in that's gonna be hard is going to be my casual dresses. I love dresses in the winter, in the, not in the winter, I love dresses in the summer because I don't have to match anything. It is an outfit all in one and that's a beautiful thing to me. But let's just go through it right off the top. Actually, this is a maternity dress. I don't need that in my everyday life. So first thing I'm gonna do, go through, see if there's any low hanging fruit. This dress, I loved it, wore it all the time last year. This dress, ooh, this is hard. I've had this for years. I do wear it a lot. We're gonna keep it for now. Next is this dress that I bought. Loved it when I got it. It was so cute. And then I ended up wearing it for a photo shoot and it was actually really uncomfortable over time on my arms. And so I'm gonna let it go. Bought this last year because I could nurse in it, um, but it's also super, super cute. So I did wear it quite a bit last summer. I'll keep it for the summer, see if I wear it a lot. Next is this floral dress. I do wear this dress whew, a lot. I feel like it's worth keeping. It is just such an easy, like throw it on, gotta run around, do mom stuff dress. So it's gonna stay. And then this one I just bought, it's like the same style, but just in a, in a mauve, 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 pinky purple color. I actually bought this and when I got it, I tried it on and I was like, I don't really like it. But then I ended up wearing it a lot because it was just easy to like throw it on with leggings and stuff in the fall. But I didn't like love it. You know, I wore it because it was convenient and it was round, so it'll go. All right, the little black dress. I'm pretty proud that I only have two little black dresses. I feel like that's not that bad, but I don't need two. So if I just look at them really quick, I know that I like the way that this one looks on me better. This one I'm very sentimental about because I got engaged in this little black dress. It is a very sentimental piece to me, but I have not worn it in many, many years. And so I think that it's time for it to go. The memory, the memory stays without the dress. I'm still married, so okay. Got two fancy dresses, black and a magenta. And I have to say really quick, I know that I'm making this look easy. Like I just like parred back my fancy dresses to only two. Like I said, I've been working very diligently for probably the last four, this is three, but I mean four, the last like four years on having a more minimal wardrobe. It's taken a long time to get to where I am. Right away, you may not be able to go down to only two and that's okay. This has taken quite a few years of just constantly practicing and constantly being good at like looking at my clothes and what I really need. In the last four years, I've gone through a lot of seasons of life from trying to get pregnant to being pregnant to being postpartum to being a mom of a one-year-old, which is like a totally separate wardrobe, to then getting pregnant again and then being postpartum and going from working in an office to just being stay at home. So like I've gone through a lot of seasons of life and so had to kind of go through a couple of wardrobes and gotten pretty good at being able to weed things out, being able to look at something and say, you know what, I can definitely survive without this. So this is maybe a little easier for me than if you're doing this for the first time. Okay, I have a little pile here that needs to be addressed and it is essentially a pile I created just, it's, I'm just gonna call it my like randoms pile. Like I didn't fit into any of the obvious categories. Like when I made my game plan and I thought of all of the categories, this doesn't fit into any of them. I need to think about what's really worth it to keep. So first thing I'm doing is just thinking about how much I've worn these things. I've had this sweater duster for a while and I wear it every single fall. It usually comes out again in the spring. Um, I feel like it's worthwhile to wear it. It's a nice neutral color. It matches a lot of stuff. I can layer it on top of a lot of stuff. Lots of times when addressing items, I like to think about, you know, can it be worn with multiple things? How functional is it? Do I look good in it? Is it comfortable? This like fits the bill for all of those. So it definitely is worth to keep. Now I have this other sweater duster which i have worn a few times it's also a nice neutral color but i don't really wear it as much it's much lighter weight so it doesn't really give me warmth at all um and i just don't think that it's practical to have two of them especially like in neutral colors so this one's gonna go i think something that's hard about uh, purging clothes is a lot of us don't necessarily have a defined style we might have style that we like 
in theory uh, when we see it on Instagram or Pinterest we're like wow that style looks really great and we really love it and gravitate towards it but maybe it doesn't fit our lifestyle we all have kind of this like ideal style but that could be different than our actual defined style and so I think that's why a lot of us struggle and end up with a lot of these mismatchy pieces something I really like to think about when I'm defining my style is I think about like what are the clothes that I like to wear for everyday life. What are the clothes that you need? And then what are the clothes inside of that category that you constantly are gravitating towards? Like what are your favorites in that category? As cute and adorable as I think a lot of these kind of pieces are, they don't necessarily fit my lifestyle and what I'm doing day to day. So another little trick I like to think of is if it's the morning and I walk into my closet and my eyes are closed and I reach into my closet and I grab a piece is that a piece that I would want to wear right now today for what I'm doing today? Um, you don't want a lot of those no pieces in your closet because not only are they probably not getting worn, but two, they're bogging down your closet. They're making it harder for you to get dressed in the morning when you go to your closet to get ready. Okay, t-shirts. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try to divide these out, like I said. Once you divide it into categories, then see if you can divide it down more. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna cut out the, anything that's a graphic tee and then anything that's a plain color. So these are graphics. And then these are plain. Okay, so we'll do graphic tees first. These are two, and then I actually have two more that are in the wash. Um, the first one here is the Mom Support Moms. I've been keeping this because I just adore the slogan, but like a shirt with that big of a graphic words on it, it's just not really my style. I loved the shirt, but you know, I really liked it more for what it said and not really for how it looked on me. Moving right along to plain shirts. I can definitely get rid of some of these. These are my American Eagle. I have two. Boyfriend. Tees. These are probably like my favorite basic t-shirts, so I'm gonna keep those. Then let's see, what do we have in here? These are the Amazon Essential V-neck tees. I have it in green and I have it in like a white. I feel like those are good basics, so I'll keep those. I have another army green. This actually, again, was something I bought for postpartum because it's a t-shirt, but it's like a super long t-shirt. You can wear it with leggings, which is nice, but I don't need it in my everyday wardrobe, so it'll go into the postpartum wardrobe. And then these are just like two basic boring gray shirts. I don't need it, it can go. Okay, so I have finished purging all of my clothes and um, ultimately what I ended up going to is I had 118 pieces of clothing in my wardrobe. I'm gonna type it into my calculator. I started with 118 pieces in my wardrobe and I was able to remove 46 items. So that includes items that I no longer am keeping and am I donating, as well as the items that have been removed completely from my normal rotation of wardrobe because they are pregnancy or postpartum items. Which leaves me with 72 items in my wardrobe. And if we can essentially agree that I have two wardrobes, I mean, some things overlap, I've gotten it down to essentially 36 items in my two separate wardrobes, my cold weather wardrobe and my warm weather wardrobe. I feel like that is pretty good. At the end of the day, it is not like this one time thing. I don't think there's probably anybody who has created a minimal wardrobe just like one time and then that was it. They bought all the black t-shirts and just like one pair of jeans and they're like, I'm done. And just like, I feel like with anything, I feel like sometimes I have a broken record with this kind of stuff when I'm talking about living with less and I'm talking about decluttering. It's never just a one time thing. I think one of the hardest things when having a more minimal closet is we feel like we're not going to be able to have pieces that are fun, that are trendy, that allow us to express ourselves. Um, and I don't think that's the case. I think that, you know, ultimately if you have a really nice refined minimal closet with the essentials, a really great pair of jeans, a really great pair of shorts you love, a couple staple shirts and staple sweaters, you can buy some pieces here and there that are trendy, that are fun, that are maybe gonna come and go from your wardrobe, but it's not totally overwhelming. When you have that good staple wardrobe, you have your go-to pieces, you can let some you know, fun little statement pieces flow through throughout the years that it still allows you to have like that fun, trendy um, bits bits. <laughs> what does that even mean? So I really think that sometimes when we initially go into it, it feels super limiting, but it's actually not. It makes it so much easier to get dressed. When I get dressed, I'm more comfortable because I've focused on clothing that not only feels comfortable, but that I think suits my body. So I feel more confident. I feel more comfortable. Um, and it's just overall, you know, less laundry. Who doesn't want that? Anyways, I hope that this video helped you guys out a little bit. I wanted to sort of share it with you because I was definitely in a place where I needed to um, par back some clothes as well as I've entered this new season of my life. 
of no longer having a newborn, which is so sad. My little baby girl is starting to look like a toddler and she's walking and it's just breaks my heart. I'm not in that season of life of having a baby anymore, which is sad, but also, you know, sleeping more at night. So that's good. As always, thank you so, so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.